everyone welcome back to JE Sprint 2.0 I am sure all of you are enjoying these sessions held by the best of faculties so today we will be looking at vectors and three dimensional geometry and I have brought some really interesting questions and I will teach you the concept associated with them as well so for those who do not know me my name is Shimon Joseph and I am a maths master teacher at Vedantu I have been teaching for almost six years now and like you guys I was also preparing for JE mains a few years back and I was one of the state toppers. So that is a quick intro about myself. Let us dive right in because I know there is very little time left out for you too. So let us go to the first question directly. So the first question that I have brought for you is right over here as all of you can see. What, what do we have here? The angle between the two lines. These are two lines. I am sure all of you are aware of it. We have studied that in NCRT as well. Is it not? So x by 2 equal to y by 2 equal to z by 1. So now, as soon as I see this line, I can tell the origin lies in this line. Why does the origin lie in this line? Because 0, 0, 0 is going to satisfy this. So that is a simple pointer for all of you. Now, the second line equation is given right over here, which is 5 minus x by minus 2 equal to 7y minus 14 by minus p or p is equal to z minus 3 by 4. Now, the angle between these two lines, you have an angle between lines, that angle is given as cos inverse of 2 by 3. Okay, so that is the first information that I read as soon as I look at the question. Now, how do we break it down and what are they asking? Obviously, they are asking us to find the value of P. Now, how do we go about this question? All of us know the angle between straight lines is given by, let me write it down for you. So, let us say the direction cosine or the direction ratio is going to be 2i cap plus 2j cap plus 1k cap for this line. I hope all of you are aware of it. Now I cannot call this direction cosine because when I take the modulus of it, it is not equal to 1. Therefore, this is nothing but the direction ratio of this line. Got it guys? Now similarly, if I want to find the direction ratio of the second line, how do I go about it? But be very careful guys because here the line equation is not given in the proper form. You have to be very observant. If you go wrong there, your entire working, your entire time is going to go for a waste. Okay guys, so now how do I change it to normal form? I need to write this as x minus 5. When I write this as x minus 5, this minus 2 in the denominator will become plus 2. That will be equal to. Now what is the difference here? Here y is in front. So I am happy. But what is with y? y is along with 7. That I don't like. Because I need to have it as y minus something divided by something. That's it. So I take 7 common. It will become y minus 2 by p by 7. I hope all of you are okay with that. So I am trying to write the line equation in the standard form. So that I can use my formulas directly. And by formulas, what do I mean? I will come to that in a few minutes. Okay, guys. So, perfect. The last one will remain undisturbed because it is already in the proper form that I am expecting. Okay. So, that will be written as Z minus 3 by 4. Brilliant. So, now I have written both the lines in a very nice manner. So, what is the direction ratio for this line? Can anyone tell me that? Can you guys quickly type it down? I want to know what is the direction ratio for this line the second one so let me write it down for you it is going to be 2i cap plus p by 7j cap plus 4k cap that will be the direction cosine or direction ratio in the right way direction cosine is not the right way to define it because again the modulus of it is going to be more than one so whenever the modulus is more than one i can never call it direction cosine guys so let us move forward. So after I know the direction ratios of two lines, how do I get the angle between them? We know that, let us say this is nothing but B1 vector. That is direction ratio of the first line. Now this is B2 vector. Direction ratio of the second line. Now do we know that B1 dot B2 is nothing but mod B1 into mod B2 into cos of the angle between them? Do you guys agree with me on that? That comes from the normal definition of a dot product. So whenever we have a dot product, how do we expand it? A dot B is nothing but mod A mod B into cos theta. And what is cos theta? Theta is nothing but the angle between A and B. 
Is it not? That is exactly what I'm writing over here. B1 dot B2 vector is actually equal to modulus of B1 modulus of B2 times cos theta and do I have the cos theta in hand? Yes, absolutely. I have the cos theta in hand, right? Which is over here. So I know the angle theta which is cos inverse of 2 by 3. So what can I say about cos theta? This cos theta is actually 2 by 3. That's it. Now what else do we know? Do we know B1 dot B2? Can I take the dot product between these two vectors? Yes, absolutely. 2 dot 2 is 4. 2 dot P by 7 is 2P by 7 plus 1 dot 4 is nothing but 4. Now that is B1 dot B2. So I have got my left hand side. On the right hand side, do I know modulus of B1? Modulus of B1 is nothing but 3. How do I get that? Square root of 2 square plus 2 square plus 1 square which is equal to square root of 9 that is equal to 3 brilliant that's it guys so now we are almost nearing the answer and I'm sure many of you might have got the idea now and you will be trying to solve it on your own perfect so now that I've got modulus of b1 I have written it down over here and I know what is cos theta now coming to the next part which might be slightly tricky how do you find mod b2 mod b2 is going to be calculated the same way as mod b1 is it not so let me write down what is modulus of b2 so first this is mod b1 i have got it very super value i put it here now let me find out what is mod b2 what is mod b2 equal to mod b2 will be equal to 2 square let me write that down which is 4 plus p square by 49 that is p by 7 the whole square so I will write that down as well plus the last one square which is 16. Now that will be modulus of B2. Is that clear guys? I'm sure all of you are following. Take a minute, go through whatever I did and then once you are okay with it, let us proceed forward and get the answer as soon as possible. Okay? Brilliant. Good job guys. So now I will erase some of these steps because I need some space to solve. I'm sure all of you will be okay with that so let me erase this this and this as well okay so now i will write mod b2 what is mod b2 square root of 4 plus 16 is 20 plus p square by 49 into cos theta which is 2 by 3 so this 3 and this 3 i will cancel it out i will cancel it out now i can cancel the 2 also to the left hand side so when i do that what do i get i will get 2 this 2 will go off, this will be 2. So now I get a very beautiful expression. What is that? 4 plus p by 7 is equal to root of 20 plus p square by 49. That's it. Over. Now I can erase everything else. Because I am going to get my answer from whatever I wrote over here. Is it not? So what will I do now? What will I do now? I am sure all of you will be knowing it. Just square on both sides guys. So when you square on both sides, what do I get? 16 a square plus b square plus 2ab which is 8p by 7 is equal to square of this which is 20 plus root plus p square by 49. Okay. So root is there. When I square it, root will go off. That's it. So p square by 49 and p square by 49 will get cancelled. I have 8p by 7 equal to 20 minus 16. I'm going to take the 16 to the other side. So when I have 20 minus 16, I will have 4 left out. So P is equal to 4 into 7 by 8, which is 7 by 2. And do I have a 7 by 2 in the options? I'm hiding it. And I'm sure all of you can see that. So 7 by 2 is there in the option. And therefore, that will be my answer for this question. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, sir, this took so much time to solve. How do you expect us to solve it in under 2 minutes in the exam? But guys, let me tell you this question, if I was solving it in an exam setup, it wouldn't have taken one and a half minutes to solve. So right now I was trying to explain each and every step so that all of you understand and you just have one more day left out and I don't want any of you to leave any chapter. So usually what happens is people think vectors and 3D might be very difficult. So there is no point in studying that in the last moment. So I'm going to leave it out. All this was done to show all of you it is possible. So don't try to leave any topic out. JE means it's quite easy. Just focus on understanding the basics. 
you will be okay with it okay perfect so i hope all of you are okay with this question let us see what else is in store for us so let's navigate to the next question guys okay perfect so i'm going to close this one and let us see what is the answer yes 7 by 2 is the answer for this question and let's move on to the next one now i'm going to scale up the difficulty so previously what we saw was a je mains question and right now what i have in screen is a advanced question and let me break it down in a very nice manner and i'm going to address a lot of concepts here so you you guys have to listen to me very patiently okay guys so let's start off with this question pretty interesting so here you have plane 1 and plane 2 we are moving on from lines to planes i'm sure all of you understand the difference between line and a plane so line is nothing but something like this i hope all of you can see that line is nothing but similar to what we study in 2d geometry right 2d geometry whatever you have is nothing but a straight line but when you talk about planes think of it like walls okay so now you have two planes p1 and p2 and then they are asking you which of the following conditions are true only two planes are given with that we need to find out which of the following information is going to be correct or wrong so if you really want to try it out if you feel you are ready for je mains please do pause the video try it out and then come join me and see whether your approach is right or wrong okay perfect so let us move forward and see how this question can be solved from a very basic knowledge point of view okay so let's move on so this is the answer for this question it's going to be c and d but i'm going to derive it one by one so that is why i have written it like this i have each option and we are going to spend at least 3 to 4 minutes on each option guys it's okay because there's lots to learn from this question the first thing is line of intersection of p1 and p2 has the direction ratios 1 2 and minus 1 now coming to line of intersection what do i mean by that so for that let me take an example i have two books over here i hope all of you can see this can you guys see this yeah so these are my two planes okay guys okay i'm struggling to hold it together yeah so these are my two planes okay now this is the normal for the first plane normal because normal is always perpendicular to my plane so this is my normal for the first plane this is my normal for the second plane now what do i mean by line of intersection this point where the two planes intersect can you guys see that can you guys see the middle part that is called as line of intersection so if you want to visualize it in your house think of it like this you have a wall on top and you have a wall on the side and in the corner they meet at a line can you see that that line is called as line of intersection is that clear to everyone so if i have two planes like this this is going to be my line of intersection now after we have understood what is line of intersection i want us to derive the direction of line of intersection that is also quite easy i will tell you again so now that i have my normal over here and normal over here how do you think can i get this line of intersection okay one sec i just dropped it so the line of intersection can be obtained by taking the cross product don't you think so guys so i have one here and one here when i take cross product where is my thumb pointing my thumb is pointing along the line can you see that so this is the normal and that is the other normal so when i bend my fingers to that which is nothing but cross product my thumb points along the line of intersection so therefore the line of intersection direction ratios are obtained by using cross product as simple as that so i am just going to take the cross product between the two normals which are given to me are they given to me did you all figure it out what are the two normals the two normals are nothing but two i cap one j cap minus one k cap that is the first normal the second normal is one i cap 2 j cap and 1 k cap i hope that everyone is clear with it is very basic already there in ncert okay guys perfect now let us try to solve this question i hope the concept part of this is clear to everyone if not please do rewind it i try to show you some example if you are not able to visualize it that way think of walls guys walls is the best example okay so you have one wall here one wall on top so the corner is going to be the line of intersection of these two walls which are nothing but planes got it and how do i get that direction that direction comes from the cross product of these two normals when i cross these two normals i get 
the direction of line of intersection is that clear to everyone i hope some of you got it others if not please do rewind it and check it out again i hope you will be able to get it okay so now let me move to this question so the first lines normal let me write it as n1 okay so n1 vector that is the normal of the first line can be written as 2i cap plus j cap minus k cap that is the normal of the first plane how does that come just coefficient of x guys coefficient of x is 2 coefficient of y is 1 coefficient of z is minus 1 that is why the direction ratio of my normal of the first plane is so and so now similarly right for the second one what is n2 n2 is nothing but 1i cap plus 2j cap plus k cap that is my normal for the second one now what is the direction ratio of the line of intersection just now we spent a lot of time on it how do we get it just cross product these two normals and how is how do we find the cross product in an easy manner the easiest way to find the cross product is going to be using the determinant that will be the fastest way so let us do that i j k and then i have 2 1 minus 1 and then 1 2 1 so now I will take the cross product. What do I get? I cap times of 1 plus 2 which is 3 minus J cap times of 2 plus 1 which is 3 plus K cap times of 4 minus 1 which is 3. So that will be my direction ratio of the line of intersection. So that is the answer. 3 times of I minus J plus K. And is that what is given over here? Is it 3? Is it 3 minus 3 plus 3? Nope. So that is wrong. So the first option given to me in this question is actually wrong. Therefore, I will move on to the second one. Okay guys, I hope all of you liked it and all of you are able to follow. If not, please do comment. I will be right with you in the chat. I will help all of you out. Don't worry guys. Okay. So if you did not get any step, please do comment it down in the chat box. I will help you out. Now, let's move on to the second option. Let's see what is here for us. The line so and so is perpendicular to the line of intersection. Now I'm happy. Why I'm happy? Because whenever I want to find whether it is perpendicular or not, I need to have direction ratios of line of intersection. So do I have the direction ratios of line of intersection? Yes, just now we found out, right? Let me write it down for you. The direction ratio of line of intersection is nothing but 3i cap minus 3j cap plus 3k cap. Just now I found it out. And how did I find it out? By taking cross product of normals. Now, if this line must be perpendicular to this, what should I say? I should be able to find out if my cross, I'm sorry, if my dot product, if my dot product is 0. Why is that? Because whenever two things are perpendicular, whenever two vectors or two lines or two directions, if they are perpendicular, we all know that the dot product is zero. Isn't it right? Because in dot product, you have something like modulus of A, modulus of B into cos theta. And cos theta, when will it be zero? It will be zero when theta is perpendicular. That is pi by two. Got it? So for that reason, the simplest way to find if they are perpendicular or not is just to find the dot product. Okay guys? And dot product between what? Dot product between the direction ratios. Now, this direction ratio I know, but the line's direction ratio I need to find out. Is it not? And guys, again, the biggest catch, and obviously you will have this catch in every exam. A good exam will definitely have this catch. That is, you have to work with them to make it the proper form. Right now it is not in proper form. So I will change it. I will write it like this. So it will be y minus 1 by 3 by minus 3. Okay. And that will be z by 3. Now what I wrote is proper form. Why is it proper form? Because I wrote it as x minus something by something equal to y minus something by something equal to z minus something by something. That is how you write in the proper form. Now, after I have written in the proper form, it is going to be super simple for me to solve because I have got the direction ratios. And guys, I am sure all of you can see 
that these two are actually parallel and not perpendicular because 3 minus 3 3 3 minus 3 3 both are obviously parallel right because they have the same direction ratio and therefore without even calculating the dot product I know for sure this is not perpendicular rather they are parallel okay so second option is also wrong that's it now I hope all of you have followed it let us move on to the third option so coming to the third option what do we have here okay yep the acute angle between p1 and p2 is 60 degree now how do you calculate the angle between planes the angle between two planes is nothing but the angle between their normals is it correct i'm sure all of you have done this in ncrt right whenever you want to find angle between two planes you just find the angle between their normals because that is going to be the same thing is it not so let us try to find the angle between their normals so i know the normal of first one we already wrote it let me write it down again for you the normal of first one is nothing but 2i cap plus j cap minus k cap and normal of second one is nothing but i cap plus 2j cap plus k cap so that's it i've got both the normals i need to find out the angle between them how do i find out the angle between them when i know both the vectors i can very easily find the angle between them by taking their dot product always guys remember this carefully when you have both the vectors given to you and if you want to find out the angle between them please go for dot product that is the easiest way to do it okay so let us go for the dot product so what is n1 dot n2 n1 dot n2 is mod n1 times mod n2 times of cos theta and theta is what I want to find because they are asking me to find the acute angle between these two planes is it not so let us try to find it out what is n1 dot n2 I will take the dot product okay so what is 2 dot 1 it is 2 plus 1 dot 2 again 2 plus minus 1 so it is going to be 2 plus 2 minus 1 on the left hand side on the right hand side what do we have we have modulus of n1 times modulus of n2 into cos theta so what is modulus of n1 so n1 modulus is calculated by square root of 2 square which is 4 plus 1 square which is 1 plus minus 1 square which is 1 that is going to be root 6 that's it so I will write modulus of n1 as root 6 and what is modulus of n2 modulus of n2 is equal to square root of again 1 square plus 2 square plus 1 square again so that is again going to be root 6 is it not guys so simple right so let me write root 6 again here and then you have cos of theta so now I am sure all of you can calculate what is cos theta quickly comment it down guys let's see who gets it first what is the value of cos theta for this question so let us do that quickly so we have 3 is equal to 6 cos theta so cos theta is equal to 1 by 2 so theta is equal to pi by 3 the acute angle so do we have pi by 3 yes so therefore this option is correct isn't it simple guys and this is a JE advanced question so JE advanced questions also are pretty simple when you start from basics so always up approach a question from the basic point of view and be very strong in concepts that is going to be helpful okay so let us move forward I'm going to erase this I hope all of you have got it I'll just move away so that you guys can have a final look at it and then we will move forward brilliant guys so let's go to the next one the last question the last option which we have to find whether it is correct or not now this is a bit tricky and it's a bit lengthy so let me explain it to you so first they're asking if p3 is a plane already we had two planes now there's one more plane coming into picture that is nothing but p3 now this guy p3 passes through the point 4 comma 2 comma minus 2 okay that is a plane new one it passes through so and so point okay i understood now what is the most info important information this plane is perpendicular to the line of intersection of p1 and p2 that is huge that is a huge information they have given you why we already know the direction ratio of the line of intersection 
What is that? I hope all of you remember because I remember it. 3i cap minus 3j cap plus 3k cap. We obtained in the first option, right? So now they are saying this plane, let's say this, my hand is the plane, is perpendicular to this direction ratio of the line of intersection. So the line of intersection is nothing but the normal. That is the information they have given you because that is so huge, guys. Without that, it is very difficult to solve this question. So now they are saying the line of intersection is going to be my normal. Is it not? So let me write that down. Let me write that down in the equation format. So whenever normal is given, the equation of plane is ax plus by plus cz equal to d. Where a, b and c are the direction ratios of the normal. And here, what is the normal direction ratio? 3 i cap minus 3 j cap plus 3 k cap. How did we figure this out? We, we figured this out in the first option where we calculated the direction ratios of the line of intersection. And here it is given very clearly that the line of intersection is nothing but the normal. Okay. So now A is nothing but 3, B is nothing but minus 3, C is nothing but. Now this information gives me so many planes depending on D. But how do I find D sir? Look at the question carefully. They said it passes through the point, right? So 4 comma 2 comma minus 2 must satisfy this. So will I get D? Yes, absolutely. So let us do that. So what is the value of D? 3 into 4 plus, I'm sorry, it's minus. So let me raise it. So minus 3 into 2 minus 3 into 2 is equal to D. So what is D? D is equal to 0 because 12 minus 6 minus 6 which is 0. So that's it. So what is the plane equation? It is nothing but 3x minus 3y plus 3z equal to 0. So I'm going to erase this and write a 0 over here. That's it. That is my plane equation. And guys, I'm going to even simplify this further by writing it as x minus y plus z equal to 0. And how did I write that? I took 3 common and took it to the right hand side and I wrote it like this x minus y plus z equal to 0. That's it. Now I've got my equation of plane, which is the new one. Now let's go to the second part of this question. Then the distance of this point from the new plane. What is the new plane? New plane I have here, right? This is my new plane P3, the new guy. So now distance of this point 2 comma 1 comma 1 from this new plane is how much? That is what they're asking. And guys, for that also, there is a direct formula, right? I'm sure all of you remember it. So how do you calculate distance of a point from a plane? Just write it as 2 into coefficient of x1, then 1 into coefficient of y, which is minus 1, 1 into coefficient of z, which is 1, plus the constant term. But here, there is no constant term. So nothing, nothing comes over here, divided by modulus of square root of what do we have square root of the coefficient squares so it is going to be square root of one square plus one square plus one square the whole modulus now that will be my answer and what do we have two minus one plus one what is two minus one plus one that is going to be two divided by square root of one plus one plus one which is root three and do we have two by root three in the question Yes, absolutely. Therefore, this option is also correct. Okay, guys. So, therefore, I will tick this as the right one. So, that is how you solve this question. I hope all of you learned some super interesting concepts. I know I, bit, I went a bit fast over here, finding the distance. Because I assume that you guys have learned it in NCRT. How do you find the distance? Just substitute the point and multiply with the coefficient. So, 2 into 1, 2. 1 into minus 1, minus 1. 1 into plus 1 plus 1 and then the constant term over here to the left side of the equal to okay guys so you add the constant term to the left hand side of the equation got it if you write it on the other side then you have to subtract okay i hope that difference is clear what i'm trying to say is if you have a constant here in the left hand side of the equation then you add it directly but if you have a constant on the right hand side then you subtract it 
as simple as that that's how the formula goes okay perfect i hope all of you got it just take a few seconds go through it and we will move to the next question i have a lot in store for you guys we need to really move forward me move fast move forward fast let's go to the next one okay yep okay so now again a pretty interesting question let us see how many of you can crack this one if you get the answer please do comment it down i'll be more than happy to know that you guys have solved it before me so now the image of the point p so and so in the plane so you have a point p you have a plane you want to find its image but usually how do you find image guys so i will just show you again i will take a plane so this is my plane i have a point here if i want to find image of this point about this plane what do i do i just directly take it perpendicular and come downwards that is my image just like how we see ourselves in the mirror so i go to the mirror my image distance is going to be equal to object distance and it is going to be straight right it is going to be perpendicular so that is how i calculate image usually but now in this question what do i have in this question they are asking image measured along a line that is tricky right it is not the usual way so here what they are asking is you have a point p here i don't want you to directly calculate straight i am saying you have point p i am measuring along a specific line and with respect to that line find the image so it is going to be like this so let me draw it down for you let's get started solving okay so please listen carefully and if you have any doubt feel free to comment it down in the chat box i will be watching it okay guys so right now let us get started solving this i will draw the plane first so you have a plane over here this is my plane okay so you have a point p what is that point p point p is nothing but 1 comma minus 2 comma 3 so usually we just drop it perpendicular we find this point to be the image if they are saying perpendicular images but right now they are asking you to find along a particular direction so let us say the particular direction looks like this so it intersects the plane at some point m and this is going to be my point q okay guys so this point p image about the plane with respect to this direction is q so i need to find this distance pq okay guys so now first question which i will ask is do i know the direction ratio of this line pq that is very important without that it is impossible to solve this question i need to know the direction ratio of this line pq and how do i get it they have given it to me right it is parallel it is parallel to this direction 1 4 5 so therefore this line direction cosine is nothing but 1 comma 4 comma 5 what do you mean by that 1 i cap 4 j cap 5 k cap is going to be the direction ratio of my line pq is that clear to everyone now we have broken down the question into simpler parts so let us move forward so let me write down the equation of line pq how can i write the equation sir you just know the direction no sir how can you write the equation sir but look at it carefully guys i know point p also i know the point p also right so let me write down the equation it is nothing but x minus 1 how do i get that x minus 1 from here divided by direction ratio 1 is equal to y minus of minus 2 which will be y plus 2 divided by direction ratio of y which is 4 that is equal to z minus 3 from here divided by the direction ratio of k cap component okay so that is nothing but 5 that's it so now i've got my equation of line is it clear to everyone so once i get the equation of line that simplifies my problem to a great extent because what i will do here is i will assume this equal to some lambda so if i write that equal to some lambda i can write x as 1 plus lambda yes then y can be written as 4 lambda minus 2 and z can be written as 5 lambda plus 3 i hope all of you got it 
Now, why do I write it like this? And what is the meaning of this? So first thing I'll explain, these three are equal, that comes from the line equation. So now, if these three quantities are equal, I can assume them to be equal to some value lambda. They are all equal, they must be taking some value. Let that value be lambda. Now, I can get x in terms of lambda. How do I do that? I multiply 1 to the other side. So it will become 1 into lambda. Then this minus 1, when it goes to the other side, it will become 1 plus lambda. Similarly, this 4, when it goes to the other side, it will become 4 lambda. And this plus 2, when it goes to the other side, it will become 4 lambda minus 2. Now, I have got x, y and z the same way in terms of lambda. What is the beauty of this? The best part about doing this is because I get any point on the line PQ. How do I get that? So if I substitute lambda as 0, I get the point P. If I substitute lambda as some value, I get some other point in this line. So now my aim is to find the value of lambda for which it lies on the plane. I want to find the value of lambda for which it lies on the plane. That means I am trying to find out the coordinates of the point M. I hope all of you are following. Listen carefully. First step, line equation. Second step, get the general point on the line. This is the general point on the line. Now, this can represent anything on PQ. So, when does it represent M? This general point will represent M when it satisfies the plane equation when it satisfies the plane equation why because m lies on the plane that's it got it just substitute it and get the value of lambda 2 into x so 2 into 1 plus lambda plus 3 into y 4 lambda minus 2 plus sorry minus 4 z right so it is going to be minus 4 times of z what is z z is 5 lambda plus 3 5 lambda plus 3 plus 22 equal to 0. So what is lambda? Can you guys help me out? Please calculate it fast guys. So let us solve it quickly. So it is going to be 2 plus 2 lambda plus 12 lambda minus 6 minus 20 lambda minus 12 plus 22 equal to 0. So what do you get? 14 lambda minus 20 lambda which is minus 6 lambda and you have 2 minus 6 which is minus 4 then minus 4 minus 12 which is minus 16 minus 16 plus 22 which is plus 6 when it goes to the other side it will be minus 6 so lambda equal to 1 got it i know it was lengthy and we went very slow some of you might be feeling sir this is too slow today but guys these are all good concepts i know many of you might not be knowing it it's good to learn this so you might have 3 to 4 days left out till your JE mains. Learn these concepts and try to solve some questions so that you will be confident enough to attend these in the exam. Okay. So please go through this and let me know till this step whether all of you have got it or not. I want you to tell me whether you have understood till lambda equal to 1. And now guys lambda equal to 1 corresponds to point M. I hope that also is clear. because what did I do here? I substituted this general point in the plane equation. When I substituted in the plane equation, I got lambda to be 1. That means this point M is going to be having lambda as 1. Why did I do this? What is the point of doing all this? Struggling so much, calculating so hard and then ending up with lambda equal to 1. The point is the value of Q the points or the coordinates of Q can be found out by just putting lambda equal to 2. Why? Because lambda is a measure of distance. So if M is at a distance of 1 from P, then Q is also going to be distance, uh, distance of 1 from M. Because Q is the image, right? So when you say image, this distance is equal to this distance. So if PM is 1 unit, then PQ will be 2 units. As simple as that. So PM if it is 1 unit. Then PQ will be 2 units. Guys when I am saying 2 units. I am just telling the relative distance. I am not telling the exact distance. Okay. So lambda is actually a measure of distance. You can think of it that way. So when I put 
m as lambda equal to 1 then q can be obtained by putting lambda equal to 2. This is one approach for those who understand this. Now the second approach which is very simple. Okay. Now that I have got lambda equal to 1, I will erase everything. Okay. Let us erase so that it won't be confusing to all of you. Perfect. So now I have got lambda equal to 1 here. So what is my coordinates of m? My coordinates of m are 1 plus 1, 2, 4 lambda that is 4 into 1 minus 2 which is 2 again and then 5 into 1 plus 3 which is 8. So the coordinates of m are 2 comma 2 comma 8. Is that clear to everyone? So that is my m. Now do I know p? p is nothing but minus 1. I am sorry p is nothing but 1 minus 2 and 3. Now how is the next approach doable? m is the midpoint. M is the midpoint of P and Q, right? Because I am finding the image of P about this direction, which is Q. So, this point M is actually the midpoint of these two. So, I can find Q that way as well. That is another good approach, which is much easier to understand. Is it not, guys? So, now I know PQ has its midpoint at M. So, let me find it out. I am going to erase it again. So let us say you have q here and q is nothing but x1 comma y1 comma z1. So now what is the midpoint of pq? The midpoint of pq is x1 plus 1 by 2 comma y1 minus 2 by 2 comma z1 plus 3 by 3 uh, plus 3 by 2. Okay. So now I want to find out the coordinates x1, y1, z1. So now this is the midpoint of PQ which is nothing but the same thing as this right so what is x1 x1 will be 3 what is y1 y1 will be what is that guys y1 will be 6 if I'm not wrong please do check it out because 6 minus 2 by 2 will give me 2 next what is z1 z1 will be how much any idea z1 will be equal to 13 because 13 plus 3 by 2 will give me 8. That's it over. I've got it. Is it not? That's it. So let me erase it and then get the value of PQ. So that is my coordinates of Q. So P is nothing but 1 comma minus 2 comma 3. Q is nothing but 3 comma 6 comma 13. So what is distance PQ? Just use distance formula. Root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square. That's it. Done, right? So what is pq? 2 square plus 8 square plus 10 square. And that will be root of 168 which is 2 root 42. And do we have a 2 root 42 in the options? Yes. Option D is nothing but 2 root 42 guys. I hope all of you are able to see that. So that will be the answer for this question. Again, might look lengthy but is still doable very quickly. Again, I would say it will take probably 2 minutes to solve this in an exam setup. You guys must be looking at that speed. That is what will be useful in your J mains actual exam. Okay guys. So let us quickly move on because I have few more questions. Let's see what is the time. We do have some time left out. So guys, let's move on. Do have a look and comment down if you have any doubts. I will be there with you guys in the chat. Okay. So let's move forward. And the answer for this one is nothing but option D which is right on your screen. So the next question. Again similar to what we did just now. The distance of this point from the plane passing through so and so and perpendicular to both the lines. So now I need to find distance of a point from a plane and all of you must be happy because we have done this and you guys know the concept to solve this question. So I want all of you to try it out along with me and if you guys solve it faster do tell me in the chat and I think most probably you will solve it faster. Okay so let us get solving guys. So I have one point and I need to find the distance of this point from a plane and do I have the plane ready made in the hand? No. J means is not going to give you laddu in a plate, right? So you need to really solve this and then get the value of plane. Okay, you need to get the plane equation. 
So let us try to get the plane equation. So in order to get the plane equation, the first thing is you need to know the normal. How do you get the normal equation or normal direction ratios? How do we get that? They are given a very clear information, right? They are having normal perpendicular to both these lines. So when I have two lines and if I want to find something perpendicular to both of them, how do I do it? I go and take the vector product. I take the cross product, right? Because if you have two directions, let's say A and B. So when I take A cross B, I will get a direction perpendicular to both of them. Is it not? So let us say something like this. I'm sure all of you know the right hand rule, right? This is my A. This is my B. This is A cross B. Got it? So A, B, A cross B will be upwards, right? I hope all of you remember that. So A cross B is perpendicular to both of them. That is exactly what I'm trying to say. So here, if I have this direction as one thing and this direction as the other vector, I take the cross product, I get the normal, which is given. Okay. So let us do that. Let's first get the normal. So how do I get the normal? I do the cross product. So I, J, K, I have 1, minus 2, 3, 2, minus 1, minus 1. Okay. Why am I doing this? Because this is norm, the normal of this plane is perpendicular to both these lines. So directly when I take perpendicular to both these lines, I arrive at the normal. Okay. And that is why I took the cross product of these two direction ratios. What two direction ratios? 1, minus 1, 3. I'm sorry, 1, minus 2, 3 and 2, minus 1, minus 1. That's what I've written. So let us write down the dot product. I'm sorry. Let us write down the cross product. Okay. So the cross product of this is going to be I cap times of 2 plus 3 minus J cap times of minus 1, minus 6, which will be minus 7 plus K cap times of minus 1, minus 4, which is going to be minus 5. I'm sorry, it is minus 1 plus 4, which is going to be plus 3. Okay. Perfect. So now that we have obtained this, let us try to write it in the complete form. 5i cap plus 7j cap plus 3k cap. Now, what did I get over here? Whatever I have obtained after the cross product is nothing but the normal of the plane which I am interested in. So now I have got normal of the plane and I have point on the plane. Can you guys find out the equation of the plane? I have taught you, right? We did it in the second question. How do you get the plane equation when you have normal and when you have a point? Let us get back to it again. Okay. So let me raise this down quickly. Okay. Yep. Done. So now the normal form of plane is nothing but AX plus BY plus CZ equal to D. Where A, B and C are nothing but the direction ratios of the normal. So when I write it, it will be like 5x plus 7y plus 3z equal to d. How do we get the value of d? We have already done this again in the second question. I just need to substitute the point because they have given me one more additional information, right? And what is that additional information? 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 1 lies in my plane. So when I substitute that point in my plane, what do I get? 5 minus 7 minus 3 equal to D. So D is actually equal to minus 5. So I'm going to erase everything and write my plane equation. My plane equation will look like this 5x plus 7y plus 3z plus 5 equal to 0. Why plus 5? Because I brought this d to the left hand side. That is why I wrote it as plus 5. Go through it and let me know whether all of you are comfortable with this and then we will together attack the answer. Okay guys. Perfect. So please go through it and let me know. Brilliant. So now what I will do is I will erase everything and write the plane equation alone so that it's easier for us to calculate. Let me erase everything. Okay. So now I have my plane equation. I need to find the distance of this point. And we have already done this again. How do you calculate distance of a point from a plane? Just substitute it in the distance formula. What is the distance formula? 
1 into 5, which is 5, plus 3 into 7, which is 21, minus 7 into 3, which is minus 21. And then, if it is on the left hand side, I, I said, if it is on the left hand side of the equation, I said directly substitute plus 5. Divided by square root of the squares of the coefficient. So 5 square which is 25, 7 square which is 49 and 3 square which is 9. That's it over guys. So what is that? 21, 21 will get cancelled. So yeah, 10 by root of 83. 25 plus 49 is how much? 74 plus 9 is 83. Okay guys. So that is there in the options. Which is it? It is nothing but option D. I hope all of you can see that. I will move away. Probably you guys can go through the solving and let me know whether you have understood it or not. Okay. I hope that is perfect. And all of you have got the method of solving. With that, let us move forward guys. Let us move forward to the next question. So the right answer is option D, which we have all got. So the next question is again on your screen. If the line x minus 3 by 1 equal to y plus 2 by minus 1 equal to z plus lambda by minus 2 lies in this plane. What does that mean? That means you have a plane like this and let me take a diagram. Let me take a pen. So you have a plane like this and you have a line. That's it. So you have a line which is lying on the plane. That's what they are meaning. So whatever point satisfies the line must satisfy the plane. Is that correct? Definitely yes, because the line is itself entirely in the plane, right? So, can I say this point, can I say this point 3 comma minus 2 comma minus lambda, 3 comma minus 2 comma minus lambda, which lies on this line, should also lie on the plane? Definitely yes, because the line itself is in the plane. So, let me substitute those points. So 2 into 3, which is 6, minus 4 into minus 2, which is plus 8, plus 3 times of minus lambda, which is minus 3 lambda, equal to 2. So what do I get? I get 12 is equal to 3 lambda. So lambda equal to 4. I'm happy because one part of the question is done. I have got the value of lambda. So now, what will this line equation become? This line equation will become like this. x minus 3 by 1 equal to y plus 2 by minus 1 equal to z plus 4 by minus 2. I hope all of you have got it. I just put lambda equal to 4. No other change. And how did I get lambda? I substituted the point of this line into this plane because they are the line is in the plane. Okay, if the line is in the plane, definitely it has to satisfy the plane equation. That's why I did that. Now, I will erase this because one part is done. Now, I will read the next part. What is the next part? They are asking, then the shortest distance between this line and this line. Immediately, I go back to NCRT. So, in NCRT, I have read this somewhere. Distance between two skew lines. The shortest distance between two skew lines. Why skew lines? Because look at the direction ratio. This is 12, 9 and 4. Is it the same here? Not at all. Not even proportional. So I know for sure that these two lines are not parallel. So they are going to be skew lines. Now the shortest distance between two skew lines is obtained by using the formula B1 cross B2 Times of A2 minus A1 divided by modulus of B1 cross B2. That is the formula for distance between two lines which are not parallel. Now I will explain the terms. What is A2? A2 is a fixed point on the second line. What is the fixed point on this line? It is nothing but 1 comma 0 comma 0. I hope all of you can see that. 1 comma 0 comma 0 that is a fixed point on the second line what is the fixed point on the first line which is what i wrote here 3 comma minus 2 comma minus lambda that is the fixed point on the first line so that is a2 bar minus a1 bar there are vectors right point vectors now what is b1 cross b2 
Let me understand first what is B1. B1 is the direction ratio of the first line which is 1 minus 1 minus 2. And what is B2? B2 is the direction ratio of the second line which is 12, 9 and 4. Now I have understood all the terms. I have good clarity. I know what to do now. Let us do that. Okay. So guys let me write down A2. A2 as the second one right. So let me write it as 1i cap plus 0j cap plus 0k cap. And what is A1? A1 is 3i cap minus 2j cap minus 4k cap. If I'm not wrong, I think that's correct. Perfect. What is A2 minus A1? A2 minus A1 is minus 2i cap plus 2j cap plus 4k cap. Okay. So I've got A2 minus A1. Let us get B1 and B2 vector cross product. And how do I get cross product always? I usually use the determinant because it's much easier guys. Standard procedure. So what is B1? 1 minus 1 and minus 2. What is B2? 12, 9 and 4. So what is the cross product? Can you guys tell me? It is I times of minus 4 plus 18 which is going to be 14. Minus J cap times of 4 plus 24 which is going to be 28. My plus K cap times of 9 plus 12 which is 21. That's it. Now I have got B1 cross B2. This is nothing but B1 cross B2. Vectors. I have got B1 cross B2. Yes. Tick mark. I have got A2 minus A1. Yes. Tick mark. Can I get modulus of B1 cross B2? Yes. Just mod of this. I can get it. That's it. I will erase this. Now what should I do? I should take dot product between these two. I should take dot product between A2 minus A1 and B1 minus I'm sorry, B1 cross B2. Okay. So let us take the dot product. I'm going to erase this completely. And let's take the let's take the dot product. Okay, guys. Okay, something happened here. Got it. So now let's take the dot product. What do I get? Minus 14 in into 2. Because 14 into minus 2, right? Then minus 2 into 28 plus 4 into 21. So what is that? Minus 28, minus 56, plus 84. 0. So I am getting my numerator to be 0. And guys, if my numerator is 0, then what is the shortest distance? The shortest distance is 0. Because numerator is 0, right? Denominator anyway is going to be non-zero. Because what is in the denominator? Modulus of B1 cross B2. Modulus of B1 cross 2. Modulus of B1 cross B2 is nothing but root of 14 square plus 28 square plus 21 square which is a finite number in the denominator but my numerator is 0 if my numerator is 0 then the shortest distance formula gives me a value 0 therefore these two skew lines are actually intersecting is it not when they intersect the shortest distance is 0 right so that is why this question is very good I hope all of you understood it. Before we close, I would like to give one question as homework to all of you, which is right on your screen. Please do have a look at it. Though this has come in JE mains in the previous year. So we have a vector A given as so and so and B as I cap plus J cap. And a C vector is defined such that modulus of C minus A is actually 3. And you also have modulus of A cross B cross C equal to 3. Now, Based on this information, I want you to find out what is the value of A dot C. That is a homework question. I would like to know what is the answer. You guys can comment it down. I will go through it. Okay. So guys, with that, we come to the end of this session. I hope all of you had an amazing journey with us during JE Sprint 2.0. I had a great time interacting with so many amazing kids out there. I am sure all of you would have made the best use of the Sprint 2.0 series, please do comment down if you need any other help from our side. If you have any doubts, do let me know. I will get back to you. And guys, before we close, all the very best. I am sure you are going to write your exam in a day or two or in a week's time. So guys, all the very best. Keep calm and give it your best. You will definitely do it. Okay guys? So let us meet in the next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye guys.